Thanks for joining us for today's Google Hangout, Saving Local Tax Dollars Through Prevailing Wage Reform. With us are State Representative Ron Marsico, Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Representative David Millard of Columbia County, and Representative Stephen Bloom of Cumberland County. All three are sponsors of prevailing wage reform legislation. And also joining us is Mr. Ron Grutza of the Pennsylvania Association of Boroughs. Thanks again, all of you, for joining us here. Let me start out with Representative Bloom. Uh, you have a number of pieces of legislation to address the issue of prevailing wage. Uh, can you briefly explain what we even mean by the prevailing wage law and uh, why we have problems? Sure, Tom. Back in 1961, the Prevailing Wage Act was first put into law in Pennsylvania, and then in 1963, the threshold was set. What it means is that any publicly funded construction project with a total cost of $25,000 or more has to be paid for by the taxpayers at what they call the prevailing wage. Well, the prevailing wage isn't actually the market prevailing wage that you would find if you were competitive, competitively bidding a project. In fact, it's a wage set by data that's collected by the uh, Department of Labor and Industry, primarily from union-funded projects or union construction projects. And the bottom line is it increases the cost to the taxpayers of building these construction projects by anywhere in the ballpark of 10 to 40 percent, depending on the particular project in the particular area. So in other words, taxpayers are getting much less bang for their buck to the tune of 10 to 40 percent less every time we do a public construction project in Pennsylvania. So you can see that it's, uh, I've often used the phrase prevailing waste when I think about prevailing wage because basically we're not getting our full dollars worth from, from those taxpayer dollars when we try to build a project efficiently in Pennsylvania. So really, prevailing wage is not the prevailing wage, especially for areas like central Pennsylvania and northern Pennsylvania and so forth. Right, and there's also a lot of uh, technical paperwork associated with bidding a prevailing wage project and building a prevailing wage project. So many times, our local contractors in central, central Pennsylvania don't even want to get involved in these because of all the complexities and overhead and issues involved. So it really hurts the taxpayers and, and hurts our, our uh, contractors throughout the, the more rural areas of Pennsylvania in particular. Now, Representative Millard, you've introduced a bill that would increase the threshold of when uh, prevailing wage law kicks in from $25,000 to $100,000. Talk about why that's necessary. The uh, threshold uh, at $25,000 as it currently is, um, any project that a small municipality does will far exceed that $25,000. It just isn't possible for them to do the same level of work for 25000 that they did in 1961 or 62. And the other thing that we find with uh, raising this prevailing wage uh, level to $100,000 is the fact that uh, all of our local municipalities, and there are literally hundreds of them, many of them do not have an economic base, a commercial economic base, or a manufacturing base for which to draw taxes. Some of our local municipalities are located in the very rural areas of Pennsylvania. The only opportunity, the only avail that they have to uh, do some of the projects that are on their books to be done is to raise local taxes. And when they're doing that, they're probably affecting uh, farmers for the most part uh, in some of the rural areas. A lot of the, the uh, aggregate of land is farmers. And a lot of uh, the other aggregate of land may be uh, state forest land. So uh, I see that this will accomplish a lot of things for small municipalities to enable them to do the things that they do best and contain it within the cost and not affect a local tax increase. Now, one of the uh, issues that's really affecting uh, municipalities, townships, boroughs, what have you, uh, all over the state is that this prevailing wage is not just for new construction, but it's in maintenance of roads. And Representative Marsico, you've introduced legislation to uh, correct that situation. Can you talk about that? Yes, I will. Uh, uh, thanks for uh, having us uh, on. Uh, you know, one of the things that in 2006 that Governor, Rel Governor Rendell did was uh, he uh, put in the new uh, rules in PennDOT, uh, new guidelines that would include uh, maintenance, uh, prevailing wage in the maintenance projects in our local municipalities. And that has, that has been a devastating effect 
we're going to look at municipalities uh, with their tax dollars. Uh, the constant theme here is, as as, as you're hearing, is that uh, this is really affecting our local taxpayers' wallets, prevailing wage, and it's just, especially with uh, not only the maintenance projects but across the board. Uh, anytime a public uh, works project is bid through the state, prevailing wage kicks in. Uh, with the maintenance projects, uh, many of our municipalities are are stretched. Uh, they can't do the projects they, that they would like to do because they don't have the dollars to do it. Because of the fact that prevailing wage has really hurt their budgets big time. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, that and other uh, pieces of legislation that I've done, uh, you know, we need to see some prevailing wage reform across the board, not just with the threshold but for options uh, to give municipalities the option to vote uh, to, uh, to opt in or opt out, uh, and other types of uh, legislation that would uh, reform prevailing wage. Now, Mr. Grutze, you uh, uh, are coming from the different perspective of representing the boroughs in, in Pennsylvania, and they, in fact, have uh, were the reason this maintenance issue, for instance, kicked in. There was a borough out in western Pennsylvania that followed that case all the way to the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. Talk about that. Right. Like right. Sure. Thanks, Tom, for um, having me on uh, today. And uh, this is a, uh, an issue that is uh, preeminent with our membership. Um, and I think with all municipalities across the state because of the, um, the impact that it has on the uh, revenues that were and of course the projects that we're able to do. A uh, little bit about the, uh, the road maintenance and the history there uh, it did come from um, one uh, small borough out in um, uh, Westmoreland County, Youngwood Borough. And uh, they had always put out uh, their, and we're talking about projects which uh, are a road resurfacing. So they'll strip off the uh, first three, three inches of the worn out um, road and then put down new, um, uh, a new surface, basically akin to uh, peeling off a, uh, your, your, wall, your wall paint and repainting it. So, uh, in the past, it had always been uh, defined, uh, depending on what administration it was, that this was maintenance, which should be uh, left out of the prevailing wage mandate. So uh, the, the borough of Youngwood, uh, relying on uh, PennDOT's interpretation of what maintenance is, uh, they bid their project. They're uh, just trying to um, uh, keep their roads up and get get some new um, uh, surface on there. Uh, so they bid it out non-prevailing wage and uh, they were challenged uh, and the Department of Labor and Industry through the um, uh, Prevailing Wage Appeals Board found that they were, um, that they that they broke the law in terms of the um, uh, prevailing wage and uh, that it had to be bid with the higher wages uh, for uh, for this road resurfacing project. So in long and short of it, uh, it the, the borough appealed and it went to the Supreme Court. Unfortunately, uh, the, um, uh, the decision came down that these types of projects had to be bid prevailing wage, which in, in the long run, that means that uh, municipalities can do less mileage of uh, road resurfacing and it impacts the, uh, the taxpayer uh, because they got to shell out more for these types of projects and they we can only do so many miles of roads whereas if uh, representative marsco's bill was passed house bill 665 we would be able to do more with with less so uh, that's that's why we're supporting uh, house bill 665. now representative millard uh this issue that you you know, the whole prevailing wage issue, but uh, the thresholds uh, in particular came up uh, a couple years ago or last year and fell by a, a very close margin. Um, what's your expectation with your bill going forward and uh, what are you hearing from your township and other borough and other officials? I've received a lot of letters of support from my townships and other townships across the state. Uh, they ultimately would like to see it go according to the inflationary index which brings it up to over 190,000 closer to 200,000 with an inflationary index in it however 
having looked at the past couple of legislative sessions and the bills that were introduced regarding prevailing wage, they didn't pass at the higher amounts. But that didn't erase, that doesn't erase the dilemma that the smaller townships face in trying to do some maintenance projects. So, you know, when you realize that you can't win the war, you hope to win a battle. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do here is to provide that necessary assistance. It may not be exactly what we want it to be uh, ideally. However, at $100,000, I happen to believe, and I know that there's a lot of letters of support that have come in to me that also believe that it will be of great value and great help and great assistance to those small townships. Representative Marsico, you, uh, as I mentioned, you've been involved with this issue for years. Um, how do you see this strategy going forward? What would you predict, uh, uh, knowing that it's somewhat uh, dangerous to try to predict, but how would you see uh, <coughs> legislative action on this? You know, I've been, like I said, dealing with 25 years, and uh, I lived, I lived prevailing wage. My business, uh, was landscape contractor, uh, I was, I've been prevailing wage projects, so I could, I saw firsthand uh, the the amount of cost. That it would cost the taxpayers, it cost businesses, uh, the administrative cost. If you did a prevailing wage project, uh, you have administrative cost uh, within your business, and also the taxpayers paying for that that rate, which is sometimes two, most of the time, two to two and a half times more than the market uh, rate. So uh, it's an issue that I'll continue to fight. Uh, hopefully, we can get something done uh, this session in the next few weeks, uh, even with the this transportation funding bill that's coming for us. We could just amend my bill, or the threshold bill, or the option bill, or some kind of reform. Uh, it would be a huge step for the taxpayers. Representative Bloom, we've heard from uh, municipal officials that this is a hassle, not just a cost, but a hassle in terms of paperwork. And I know one of you alluded to that already. But how do you see going forward? What are your predictions here? Uh, Tom, uh, can I one, make one point I intended to make earlier, just to clarify for any, any, anybody who's watching the Hangout today? Prevailing wage is not the same thing as minimum wage. I know there's been some confusion out there sometimes in the public mind. These We're talking about uh, individuals on these jobs who are getting paid typically far above the minimum wage, and we're not talking about uh, knocking the minimum wage down for anyone. anyone. It's a separate issue, completely different, and uh, just very important for people to understand. Prevailing wage and minimum wage, two completely different rules. Prevailing wage is what inflates the cost of public construction projects. A uh, minimum wage is a completely separate rule for how much you get paid for each hour you work as, as a minimum. It doesn't usually even affect these jobs. So that's a key point. Where we go from here, it's key that our township officials, our borough officials, our county officials, uh, our school board officials keep letting their legislators know how important this is. Because I hear from them all the time, I'm behind these bills, I'm, I'm supporting these bills fully, but they've got to help uh, encourage other representatives and senators who may not understand the issue or, or realize how, how much this impact this issue is impacting our taxpayers, help make sure they know how important this is to move it right now, get behind these bills right now, whether it's Representative Millard's bill, Representative Marsico's bill, or other bills that are out there that would, would provide some serious substantial reform to this outdated, outmoded prevailing wage. Thank you, Representative Bloom. That's a perfect uh, segue to a close here, and I just want to let everybody know that if they want further information about this whole issue, they can go to the website www.fixprevailingwage.com. And uh, this video was posted there, but there's a lot of other interesting uh, material and information. So hope you'll go there and uh, hope you'll support this effort. Thanks again for joining us for this Google Hangout, saving local tax dollars through prevailing wage reform. Have a good day.